Hello and welcome again to Mondays with Mike. I hope you had a great Easter. I know it was humid. It was a little on the warm and humid side, but, uh, you know, we made it not really all that unusual for us to have, you know, really humid conditions around here on Easter, but it seemed to be a little bit more so this year. So the topic of the day today is going to be drought and the actually some pretty big effects that it's already having on Texas and some of the concerns that we're going to have as we progress through the spring and head into the summer. So um, behind me, um, this is a map that actually shows all of the wildfires that are taking place across the country right now. And there were some new ones that popped up over here uh, into um, New Mexico. So off to the north of New Mexico, uh, excuse me, off to the north of El Paso, uh, there is um, a large fire that's been burning here. This is 6,000 acres, at least as of this weekend. Uh, it was 6,000 acres. Um, and it actually, and it's very sad that a couple of people have actually died from this fire already because it's close to some residences and it's threatening houses. And, you know, it's not like it's out in the middle of nowhere. So now, yes, that's in New Mexico and it's not here, but it is sort of a part of the same problem that we're having here in Texas. You know, when it, when it comes to precipitation, look, we know around here, we can go through periods of time when we get just about a year's worth of rain in a, almost a day, but I mean, you know, a year's worth of rain in a week, you know, when it comes to a tropical system, we can go through time periods when we have very frequent rain. And then sometimes we go through periods like we actually have been going through where we have had infrequent rain and in some places, you know, almost none. I mean, for example, this past March um, in Galveston was one of the driest on record. So the new drought monitor maps that came out this week uh, reflect that. And so um, when you look at the entire state of Texas as a whole, as it stands right now, 88% of the state of Texas is under a drought, some sort of drought. By the way, what do we mean by drought? What is a drought? Well, all a drought means is it's an extended period of time with below normal rainfall. That's the simple definition, an extended period of time with below normal rainfall. The reason there's not a more specific definition is that it actually uh, is what's called a, a, a relative term, meaning that um, a drought in Houston might not be the same thing as a drought in El Paso or a drought in Phoenix. Um, because you have different vegetation, you have different average rainfall, you have different, um, some places have much more of a wet season and a dry season. And so if it hasn't rained for a while, that's not abnormal. You know, if you're kind of in a dry season situation, like in California, you get that a lot where, you know, like summertime in California doesn't really rain very much. And so it wouldn't be considered a drought necessarily, but it is a drought if you go through a whole winter and you don't get mountain snow and then the the rivers run dry, that kind of thing. So it's just suffice it to say it is sort of relative, but really around the state of Texas, it has been getting worse and worse. And we've gone now over the last year where a lot of places, especially um, west of I-35, like west of uh, San Antonio and Austin and heading down to the Rio Grande Valley, like Laredo and Del Rio, and increasingly so even here in the Galveston area, Galveston County, Brazoria County, we're running into um, you know, fairly serious drought. Now, the droughts here are classified into different categories. Th by the way, this data that we show you on the air, this is called the US Drought Monitor. And it's, um, it comes, it's like a cooperative effort that comes out every week. So it comes from the USDA, so the US Department of Agriculture. And then there are also some universities that are involved like Texas A&M. And I think also the University of Nebraska at Lincoln, UNL, is one of the primary um, you know, universities that puts out, you know, contributes to the data. But anyway, they've broken it up into five categories. One of them is dry. They call it abnormally dry. And the second phase after that is moderate drought and then severe drought and then extreme drought. And then the worst of the worst they call exceptional drought. I suppose they could have called it super extreme or ultra extreme or something like that, but a decision had to be made and it's called exceptional drought. So what does that mean? Well, it's interesting. I kind of pulled the definitions here because um, 
it's not necessarily clear, you know, just from listening to the word, what does it mean? You know, what does all this mean? So um, if you're in an area that's abnormally dry, for example, right now, let's say Conroe in the woodlands or spring, um, it just means um, it may affect things like your, your garden, your plants. If there's agriculture, it affects when farmers would plant their crops and maybe lead to increased irrigation, stuff like that. Not a, not a huge, huge deal. Moderate drought, which is what we have across much of Harris County now and across places like Katy and Sugarland and uh, back over to um, uh, around Pearland, uh, that means that there's some damage to crops or pastures and that streams or reservoirs are going to be running low, okay? Severe drought, which is what we have right now for just about all of Brazoria County, just from Pearland southward, all of Galveston County, all of Chambers County, part of Fort Bend and Wharton County, and part of Colorado County. So a severe drought means that crop and pasture losses are likely, water shortages are common, and water restrictions may be imposed. So if you're not a farmer, why, would, why should you care? Well, a lot of reasons. You know, if you're a rancher, or, well, let's put it this way. If you eat beef, okay, and you, we know that the price of everything is very high right now. I mean, inflation is ridiculous, right? We all know that. The price of everything has gone up and up and up. Um, ooh, my wife is calling. I'm going to have to call her back. Sorry. <laughs> She's fine. Um, you know, the price of everything is expensive. The price of meat is expensive. Well, consider that if a rancher is raising cattle. They usually graze on the field, right? Let's say they're grass-fed cattle. They graze on the field and then their diet is probably supplemented by corn and things like that. Well, now that grass is toast, right? There's not as much to eat. The grass isn't growing. The grass that's there is kind of yucky and scraggly and, and it's uh, dried out. And so the rancher has to pay a lot more money to, to feed the, the herd. And so as a result, your price of beef, if you eat beef, is going to be more expensive and it's already expensive. And so something like this, a drought you know, like this, is going to make it even more expensive. We also have a lot of crops. You know, If you live around Houston, in the city, you wouldn't know it. But if you just drive down 288 South, they grow cotton and they grow corn, I believe, and they grow grass for sod at, you know, like if they build a new house or something and they sod the yard, that sod comes from around Bay City. A lot of that stuff comes from Matagorda County. So if you go through a serious drought like they are down there now, well, either you lose the crop or you have to spend a lot of money in irrigation to irrigate the crop. And again, the price of everything goes up. Um, that's if you can salvage the crop. Out to the west, like out here in uh, Colorado County, west, that's where they grow rice. So uh, over there south of I-10, Colorado County, and out around uh, Fayette County and those spots, lots of rice. And um, again, you need like these flooded fields, you know, to, to get the rice going. And if you don't have that, then you either lose your rice crop or you have to spend a lot of money again to irrigate that. And it's also interesting, you know, like if you drive eastbound on I-10 and you look off the side, you know, once you get out there uh, closer to Beaumont, you start to see the crawfish fields too, you know, on the side of the road. When you look on the side of the road, a lot of people don't know what it is, but you see this big, what looks like a lake, but it's a really shallow lake. And if you look, there's different markers in there. And anyway, the, that's where the crawfish live. And then, of course, they get harvested um, in the fall, I guess, late fall. And... Uh, if they get too hot, they don't grow well. And if the water levels get too low, then they have to be irrigated. And anyway, it just makes everything more expensive. So um, let's hope that we get a little bit of relief from that. When you get into areas of extreme drought or exceptional drought, like they have out here in central Texas, and by the way, yeah, south Texas, there's a, a lot of agriculture there too, like grapefruits and oranges, you know, they grow citrus. Um, 
you're talking about major crop and pasture losses with widespread water shortages or restrictions. Um, exceptional drought is uh, exceptional widespread crop and pasture losses, shortages of water and reservoir streams and wells, like the rivers will run dry. I mean, it really turns into a big mess. So anyway, that's something that, uh, a drought is a funny thing because it's not like a, a flood because a flood happens suddenly, you know, we'll, you have a big thunderstorm or you have a, uh, a hurricane and there's a flood, you know, and the flood comes up and the flood hangs around for a day or a couple, two days, or maybe at worst three days and causes a lot of damage and everything, but then it goes away. But a drought is one of these things that kind of sneaks up and it takes months to form. And then, you know, it, it might take months to go away. Or if it lingers, sometimes it lingers like over in California for such a long time, it lingered for years. So now the focus has shifted to Texas. So uh, the question becomes, you know, what, what happens next? You know, I mean, is there any rain on the way? I mean, yes, there could be a couple of stray showers. But, you know, one of the websites, if you want to go and check it out, and, and I'm going to show you this here in a minute. But if you want to go check it out, there's the Climate Prediction Center. Okay. It's the CPC, the Climate Prediction Center. And so they come out with outlooks for temperature and for precipitation. So we could look at, let's say, the one month uh, precipitation outlook. So this is taking us through, well, this is for the month of April, obviously, which we're already in. So let's skip that. Let's look at the three month, okay? So this is for April, May, June. What are the odds? When, when they, they look at the overall weather patterns that are expected, for April, May, June, all put together. Seasonal precipitation outlook, okay? So look at this brown over Texas. What that means is that the chances, it's not actually predicting how much below normal. What it's saying is if you look at the chances where it's white, those are equal chances. Like there's a 50-50 chance it's gonna be drier than normal or warmer than, or um, wetter than normal. But where you see the brown, which includes all of Texas, including Houston, it means that the chances are leaning toward more likely drier than normal. So when you see that there's this serious drought going on and then you have this outlook that calls for below normal um, amounts of, of rainfall. And by the way, I, I believe above normal temperatures too. Let me, let me look at that real quick. Yeah, above normal temperatures. So this outlook through June is for hotter and drier conditions than normal. And remember, that doesn't mean it's not going to rain, but you know, on average, um, they're expecting it to be hotter and drier than normal. That's the NOAA Climate Prediction Center. And uh, there also are um, outlooks for uh, seasons as well. Um, let's see, here's the seasonal forecast, which means that you could look you know, farther into the future. So let's say June, July, August taking us through the summer, June, July, August. This map is showing that most of the country, just about all the country will likely be above normal on temperatures for June, July, August. And that the precipitation levels, we're like on the verge of either being even precipitation or trending toward lower precipitation values for, for that time frame. And then, you know, you could even look farther ahead. Um, you know, it obviously I think it gets a little bit less you know, accurate as you're looking at July, August, September. Um, but above normal temperatures seem to be a good bet, which causes evaporation and then either normal or maybe slightly below normal uh, amounts of rainfall. So, uh, you know, if you think back, this was now 10 years ago, 11 years ago, the summer of 2011, um, you may remember the Bastrop fire. There was a huge, huge a wildfire that basically burned down the whole forest around Bastrop Nas uh, State Park, Bastrop State Park, on your way over to Austin. And there were also forest fires here locally, you know, like up around um, Magnolia and Plantersville. I know that there were some pretty large and scary wildfires because the next, I think it was later on that summer, or it might have even been the next fall, like the fall of 2011, we were driving to the renaissance festival and you were driving through this area there to get up to uh todd mission and just both sides of the road the trees are just charred you know just black and 
you know, we don't want that to happen again. So um, every once in a while when the air gets very dry, you may hear me say that uh, there's a red flag warning, which is a fire danger warning. We don't have that um, f for this week. I don't think we will, but um, there are some counties that are under a burn ban. So what's a burn ban? Well, it means that it has to be issued by the county judge, by the way. The county judge will issue an order banning the burning of anything outdoors. And you know, it's probably not something that those of us who live in the city or in the suburbs really would do a lot of. Um, but with the 4th of July, sort of around the corner, I mean, I guess it's a ways off, but you know, you wouldn't be able to set off fireworks. Um, and people who live out in the country, you can't, you know, burn your trash or, or burn some, sometimes you'll cut down some brush, you know, people go in and clear an area of some, just some scraggly bushes and brush and then just burn it because you have nothing else to do with it. Uh, but you can't do that because it'll start a, start a, a forest fire or whatnot. So these are all of the counties that are under the burn ban right now. And increasingly so we are seeing some counties in our area. So as of uh, yesterday or as of this, so if you're watching this on Monday, let's say it's Monday, um, as of this past weekend, we have um, Liberty County is under a burn ban. Walker County, Huntsville, under a burn ban. We also have Jackson County and Colorado County burn bans in effect. And then, and then about 100, see, there are 150 counties in Texas where burn bans have been declared with a couple of big omissions like Bear County, Harris County, Dallas County, not under a burn ban. Some of that has to do with the fact that um, they're more urban, you know, but regardless, we can see, I would fully expect that if nothing changes anytime soon, we're probably gonna see some burn bans issued maybe for Galveston County or Brazoria County. So that is going to be one of the stories here that we're talking about. Um, and like I said, since droughts are slow to develop and slow to end, it, it may be something that is a story heading into the hurricane season. Last week, in fact, if you want to search last week, uh, Mondays with Mike, you can go to YouTube and just type in Mondays with Mike and look at the one from, from last week and uh, where I talked about this year's hurricane season forecast and the fact that we will probably see a busy season in general. But that doesn't necessarily mean that we're going to get needed rain from it. Maybe we will, maybe we won't. But... Um, if we don't, then the drought is going to become a bigger and bigger deal. So that's the topic of uh, this week here, droughts on Mondays with Mike. I guess that's not like the most exciting topic in the world, right? I know, but it's, <laughs> it's what's going on right now. Uh, and uh, also, you know, there's a lot of uh, interesting and exciting things that are happening at work and, you know, here at Fox 26 and uh, this past weekend, uh, the USFL kicked off, which is a lot of fun. Cause like for me, I was a kid when the original USFL came out, um, but I'm still familiar with it. And I still know that there were a lot of great NFL players who played in the USFL, you know, the old USFL, 1983 to 1985. And so although this one is set up differently, it's gonna be a cool thing, I think, to watch. And Fox is actually a part uh, creator of the league, so. There's a lot of technology that you'll see that goes into it, um, more so than regular football. There's like cameras all over the place, and it's pretty cool stuff. So anyway, that'll do it for this week's Mondays with Mike. Uh, if you would, if you're watching on the live stream, um, thank you very much. If you happen to be watching the live stream, let's say on Facebook Live, go ahead and leave me a comment or a question, and hopefully I'll have a chance to get to it. If you're watching this on YouTube, uh, I would really appreciate it just uh, to, if you like it, to give me a thumbs up and uh, go ahead and write a comment or a question below and share it uh, with your friends who might be interested in drought. Because I know that's what a lot of people are asking. They're saying, tell me more about the drought. Well, here you go. Mike was just talking about it. So <laughs> maybe. All right, guys. Hey, thanks for joining me. And I will see you on the morning news. And of course, next week on Mondays with Mike.